All right, thus begins the combat test for Digital World Stories. To be correct, this is the first combat test. I've got a couple lined up, and to properly express them, I'd like to describe the way that NPC building in DWS works specifically. What I have is a group of templates which you use to build and balance characters. Right now, you're seeing four opponents here for the Digimon we showed off in the character build. The four opponents being Unimon, Centauramon, Dromogamon, and Merimon, fitting opponents from the File Island arc. The template they were all running off of is referred to as the standard template. The point of the standard template is to make a Digimon of the same stage as a player character Digimon be roughly one-to-one -one in terms of challenge. So a group of four standard Digimon is a fantastic challenge for four Digimon player characters. This includes the benefits granted by the human characters. If the humans were not here at all, this would actually be pretty rough for the champion player character Digimon. The actual benefit of humans is real and good. The other part of the templates is a archetype which falls into the role archetypes of attacker, defender, controller. So Dromogamon is going to be acting as our defender, Merimon and Centauramon are playing the roles of attacker, and Unimon is serving as a controller. There's more, a little more to NPCs, but right now what you need to know is that this should be a roughly equal 4v4 match. You can see that I have already rolled initiative, and we are going to kick things off. But before we do, I just want to go over, since the last video, I've already done some amount of updates to the system. You'll see it in the changelog for Digital World Stories, which I have open along with the combat quick guide so I can reference things I need to remember. But the builds have changed slightly for these digis, so I'm just going to click through them. Not much. Uh, Bergemon had Pale Digicore changed from dodge to movement because it better fit a buffer. And Ikakumon, I've removed the impact quality because it ended up being much stronger than I wanted it to be. Inspiration is rolled. Togemon is first off. So I'm just going to dig right into this. Togemon is going to get mixed up in the business because that's what it does. Now, Togemon is going to move forward one, two, which brings it in reach of Merimon. However, Merimon, you might see this skull icon. That represents a effect Merimon has referred to as a trait. Traits are the special part of NPC Digimon. They are custom unique abilities to that Digimon specifically, which both better allow them to fulfill their archetype, allows them to have a unique bit of ability and personality, and is a challenge towards players to overcome, because traits can be deactivated and stopped, and in high-level combat, ultimately that's going to be your goal, to get rid of traits as soon as possible. Merrimon's trait is all adjacent units are difficult terrain to non-allies. You'll see Togemon just took two steps, but to step into any of the adjacent squares of Merrimon actually takes two points of movement. So Togemon has completed a full move action. Togemon also does not currently have a star gauge right now, but that's going to change in just a moment. Now, what Mimi is going to do for us, uh, usually she does some cool support moves, but she's actually going to open up with the scan action. She is going to move to remain adjacent to Togemon, because having the battle partner quality gives Mimi a good reason to do so. But the scan action, which I'm going to jump over to the combat quick guide to go over. Only Digivice holding characters can use this action. Choose a Digimon adjacent to either you or your Digimon partner. You will learn the first unknown description of that Digimon's traits. So, Merrimon has a trait. Standard Digimon have one trait each. Other template Digimon can have more, and we'll talk about them in future videos. Merrimon's trait, which you get by back with uh, the scan action, reads, Merrimon's burning body pushes you back, making it hard to approach. Douse or smother it. 
So, if you can fulfill some sort of action to douse or smother Merimon, you could maybe deactivate that trait. But Togemon does, is not really in a position to do that. What Togemon is in a position to do is lots and lots of punches. Dromogamon, who's playing the role of Guardian, is immediately going to move in with a Intercede reaction. Which probably didn't need to move specifically. No, Dromogamon doesn't need to... Dromogamon's already adjacent to Merrimon, so it doesn't need to move for Intercede. But, well, Togemon's got some other stuff to do first before starting that attack. Togemon activates its Style Gauge, which costs one energy and then spends 6 HP immediately to regenerate that energy. And now Togemon is going to take a swing. Dromogamon intercedes. Togemon's attack automatically hits. We can tell that Togemon's attack is going to be light speed jabbing, which is a 2d6 plus 3 damage. So let's roll that. But Togemon's going to spend an energy to use Mighty Blow which is spend one energy, make two damage rolls with plus 1d6, and take the higher of these two rolls. So, first, Togemon spends an energy. Because of Pale Green Digicore, Togemon gets two health back. And now, we make 3d6 plus 3 twice, and take the higher. This is very painful, but that's why Togemon's job is to do lots of melee damage. 11 damage, Dromogamon has 5 armor to its name, so that's 6 damage to Dromogamon. What Togemon can also do now is use its reaction to use second impact. Now, this will be 2d6 plus 3, which is not the most odds of hitting. But actually, Style Gauge is up. I did forget to add that before, so it's going to be 2d6 plus 5, thanks to Style Gauge which is enough to hit Merrimon for 2d6 damage. Seven points to Merrimon. Togemon leads the way with high amounts of damage. Kabuterimon is up. Kabuterimon is going to aim to deal with Merrimon's trait, but is not in the best of positions to do that right now. What we can do is move one, Hmm. Kabuterimon has a movement of three, does have flyer. We want to try and keep the middle open because these guys are blocking off access to all of this wonderful room to maneuver. But Kabuterimon is also trying to play the role of Guardian. So what we're going to use is the Guard and Guardian stance actions. To represent this, I'm going to put this shield icon on Kabuterimon. I'm also going to remember to put a red marker on Togemon to indicate that reaction is used. Same deal for Dromogamon. So Kabuterimon has used two actions right now, Guard and Guardian Stance. Thanks to Guard, the armor of Kabuterimon should be 6. 3 by default, Guard brings it up to 6. And Guardian Stance will allow it to move to Intercede. It is Dromogamon's turn. Regain reaction. Dromogamon is going to make things difficult for folks. I think Dromogamon is going to open with an attack that targets Togemon. The specific attack is Drill Blaster, which is going to be a flat 3d6 plus 3 to hit. Kabuterimon will intercede that and go many squares. One, two, three, four. Okay, still adjacent to Togemon, able to block things off. The attack does hit automatically, which is gonna do 2d6 damage. Seven damage reduced by an armor of six to one point of damage. That's tanking, baby. And if it had been reduced further, to, if it had been one point less, it would have been reduced to zero because of Guardian Stance, and Carboterimon would have gotten its reaction back, which would have been very nice. Uh, Drill Blaster also inflicts Taunt, which I'm going to represent with this yelling marker. So Dromogamon has taunted Carboterimon, 
If Carbaterimon makes an attack roll against any one but Tremogamon on its next turn, it's going to have disadvantage. Okay, Drogon has taken an action. It, because it's attacked, it can't use Guard, but it can use Generate Reaction to gain a second reaction, which will allow it to do multiple intercedes. Merrimon is going on the aggressive. Thanks to being adjacent to Togemon, Merrimon is able to melee attack, and Kabuterimon is not in a position to defend. So... Merrimon is going to open with a light attack action that targets Kabuterimon, who is just, who is successfully three units away. This light attack action will be made with disadvantage because it is the light attack. So this is 2d6 plus five. And the evasion of Kabuterimon is 13. That misses. That's fine, Merrimon. And now Merrimon is going to target. Togemon with Heat Fist. So this is going to be 3d6 plus 5 to hit. That is a hit. It is going to do 2d6 plus 2 damage. Togemon eats a nasty 10 points. This is good. I want this to start rough and then get better. That's Merrimon's turn. Ikakumon's turn. Ikakumon has a wonderful line of sight on Dromogamon. Not, uh, and possible on Merrimon. So Ikakumon, rather than moving up, is going to start shelling because that's what Ikakumon does. Ikakumon will open up with its six range attack Harpoon Tornado, which Dromogamon will intercede, because that's what it does. Uh, oh, I forgot about... Okay, Koshiro has taken the scan action on his turn. They're so easy to miss when they're down here, and also I'm playing everyone at once. The scan action targeting Dromogamon reads, Dromogamon enthusiastically protects its allies. They are its confidence. What can you interpret from that scan action? Uh, as long as there are allies, Dromogamon may be doing better than usual. Anyway, now that we've taken a scan action, Koshiro is going to do some moves just to keep out of the way. Because that's right. Okay, now to Ikakumon. Ikakumon is going to open with a Harpoon Tornado targeting Merrimon. The line is successfully able to be drawn, which does not overlap any character. It has to be from, it can be from the like furthest corner, but it can be to a back corner as well. This is possible. So this is Harpoon Tornado. This will be 4d6 because of Sniper, plus five for accuracy. But Dromogamon is, of course, going to use its reaction to intercede on this, which means we're just going to be rolling Harpoon Tornado's damage of 2d6 plus 1. 9 damage. Dromogamon is not guarding, so its 5 armor reduces this to 4 points. And now that Dromogamon has used its reaction... We can't target Merrimon a second time with a distance of six, but we do have line of sight on Dromogamon, who's right here, which is why we can now spend one energy with the Kakumon to use the Salvo action. Spend one energy to perform the Light Attack action using a named range attack with the damage modifier. The Light Attack action still demands disadvantage, so it would be 2d6 plus five, but Sniper still applies. Brings it up to 3d6 plus 5. And Joe is going to use the direct action as a complex action to give a boost of 2 to this accuracy check. So it's going to be 3d6 plus 7 to hit that Dromogamon. And it does! And that is another 2d6 plus 1 damage dealt to Dromogamon. 11 reduced by 5 to 6, down to 16. We are hammering this tank. But other folks are here too, and Centaurimon is going to take some shots. 
The positioning on this is a little rough. There's no great angle to hit a lot of guys. So, Centaramon is just going to... Kabuterimon is still shielding. Oh, actually, we do have an angle. Uh, I'm going to demand that you move to get this line up, but this is a line that goes through Kabuterimon and Togemon both. And Centaurion is boasting an attack called Duck Prominence Beam, which has line 6 on it. So I can get both of these guys with Prominence Beam. So we're going to make a check, which is going to be 3d6 plus 5. This is risky. Uh, honestly, I think uh, that's a movement of 5 away, huh? Yeah, Ikakumon's going to take one for the team and use its reaction to move one, two, three, into position here. Your reaction has been spent to auto-take this damage, because if Togemon were to get knocked out, this would be pretty bad. The check is 3d6 plus 5 on Prominence Beam. That's a hit of 13. I believe that does hit everyone here, actually. Kawaterimon's dodge is 13. Uh, Ikakumon's is 13 and his auto hit. Togemon's would have been 13. Yeah. And this damage is 2d6 plus 2. That was correct. That was correct. 13 damage. Kabuterimon takes this. Kabuterimon has an armor of 6, so that is 7 points of damage. And that is Centaramon's turn. Bergeron is up. Bergeron is going to use, of course, Red Sun, and this is going to be with the target allies action. So we're going to spend one energy, Red Sun, on everyone here. I'm going to represent that with this target icon. So everyone here has buffs from Red Sun. Because it moves from Bergeron, everyone could move he moved in one di relative direction, but everyone is once again packed up here, which is annoying. Bergeron does not have good angle of attack on Dromogamon. Six is too far away. So is going to take a movement action of one, two, three, four, using flight to head up this ridge with the intention of trying to get around the back of this and break things apart. Unimon, much like Bergeron, is going to be doing some buffing of allies, specifically targeting Dromogamon and Merimon. This is the Angel Feathers attack, which Unimon can use as a light attack action to benefit two allies, both of which are three away, easy. Unimon has a light, uh, using Angel Feathers as a light attack action is free for Unimon as long as it has its active trait. And so what it's going to do is circle around with a movement of five. One, two, three, four, five. With aim on Togemon is going to use Holy Shot which will be a 3d6 plus 3 to hit. Misses! Okay. This attack goes at Togemon, does not hit, loops back around. All right, Togemon, you have to do some damage. And the way Togemon is going to do that is by targeting Unimon, who is just three away, with... Needle Spray. Now, Burst is different now, so it's only one, but that's okay, because I wouldn't want to use Burst in that situation anyway. Needle Spray allows Togemon to target Unimon, and even with a reaction, Dromogamon could not physically make it to Unimon, could you? One, two... Nope. Dromogamon cannot make it adjacent to Unimon, 
and so can't stop this. Merrimon isn't going to. Merrimon needs to do attacks. So this attack is going through. Thanks to Red Sun's buffs, we've got a plus three to our check. Thanks to our style gauge, we've got a plus two. So that's plus five. So this is 3d6 plus eight to hit Unimon. Yep, that's a 16. Unimon's dodge is actually 15, so this is a pretty good hit. We will then invest energy on Mighty Blow. That causes us to recover two more health. And now our check is going to be 2d6 plus 1, but it's 3d6 plus 1 twice. I'm going to talk about what Mimi has been doing in a moment, because she's got something cool going on. Alright, so this is 14 damage to Unimon, who has no armor. Now, Unimon's issue is that Unimon is actually in the air, because Unimon's been flying around. So, because Unimon took damage while in the sky, Unimon falls to the ground. It's only one unit high, but it was flying, so that's going to be a point of impact damage, which uh, deactivates Unimon's trait. Unimon's trait reads, Unimon flies through the skies, aiding its allies, lock it down. And when you make it fall and take impact damage, this trait deactivates. Unimon can no longer use Angel Feathers as a free light attack action. Now then, Togemon's about to use its reaction to throw a punch, but Mimi's also about to use her reaction. Mimi is using the hold action action, which is I'm going to do something when something happens. She's holding the direct action, which is a simple action for her, because she is a battle partner to Togemon. And her reaction for it was when Togemon's buffs run out because it attacked, use direct to grant you two more buffs so that Togemon can use second impact targeting Merrimon, which Dromogon will use its reaction to intercede for. So it ultimately doesn't matter that Mimi did all of that, but if you want to get ahead of a reaction, you have to use another reaction. Because second impact is reaction driven, even a battle partner can't use, a trainer can't use their reaction for this. But it worked out, and that means Togemon is going to use second impact successfully, which is going to be a flat 2d6 damage. So Togemon 2 Dromogemon deals 8 damage, reduced by an armor of 5. 13 damage. Mimi is also going to use her other simple action to use the Hecla ability. As a simple action, target an enemy you can see and inflict debuffs equal to your Charisma core stat. Now, there's discussions about line of sight with characters in a row, but I'm pretty confident Mimi can see Merrimon from here, so Mimi is going to hit Merrimon with debuffs. What's my icon for debuffs? I love the one which is just back pain. <laughs> I think I may have to use back pain. Back pain is very funny for debuffs. Uh, Mimi inflicts five debuffs. Merrimon had two buffs because of Unimon. So these cancel out and Merrimon has three debuffs right now, which I'm going to make a mark of because I will otherwise forget this. Okay. Great turn for Togemon, lots of damage spread out. Togemon has one action left, which it's going to use on Generate Reaction, so that it still has one reaction squared away if it needs to do an intercede or the like. It's Carboterimon's turn. Carboterimon gains its reaction back. It really wants to beat the heck out of Dromogamon, but this is proving a difficult situation. You don't want to leave reach of Togemon, but everyone else is doing things as well. I think what Carboterimon needs to do here, and this is going to be a tricky maneuver, the goal is to use Harsh Buzzing, which is also Burst 1 now, because Burst with Reach ended up being way too strong. So... How can I move Carboterimon such that I can hit multiple opponents with Harsh Buzzing? Uh, 
Okay, I, I see exactly how to do this. This is going to be a tricky one, but let's go. Kabuterimon lifts off into the sky and begins flying. One. Two. All right, Kabuterimon is overhead right now. We are now going to use Harsh Buzzing, which is an area-based attack. Which, because it's not directly targeting Dromogamon, I will say does have Taunt applied to it. So it's going to be 2d6 because of the disadvantage, but plus 3 from... We don't have our shield anymore. Plus 3 from Red Sun. No, you don't get a cool trophy. I'm sorry. I know you'd like the trophy. Let go of the shield. So this is going to be for Harsh Buzzing. 2d6 plus 6 to hit. And that successfully gets both Merrimon and Dromogamon. So, both of you are victims of Taunt. And now, Carbotarimon has used both its actions, but it's going to use one energy to activate Guardian Stance. And we're going to find out about why we're using Guardian Stance later, because it's probably not going to successfully reduce to zero, but that doubled movement action is going to help us recover our position without everything going to hell. That's Kabuterimon's turn. Dromogamon is up. Dromogamon is taunted. And Kabuterimon is directly above it. And it does have buffs. So Dromogamon is going to hit Kabuterimon with a melee attack, because Kabuterimon is within melee. Taunt will not stop this, so this is 3d6 plus 2, plus Dromogamon's own accuracy of 3. So 3d6 plus 5 to hit Kabuterimon. 14 is a hit, so we do 2d6 damage with Drill Buster. 7 points of damage. Reduced by 3, because Kabuterimon's base armor is 3. So 4 points of damage. But thanks to Pale Black Digicore, this also does some impact damage back to Dromogamon. Specifically, 3 points of impact damage, which is not reduced. Now, unfortunately, this is a case where Kabuterimon now falls because of Flyer. So it lands on Dromogamon. I would say you can't really occupy the same space, so you're going to tumble off, and I'm going to push you back in this direction. Because you guys hit each other with a fall, this is going to do one impact damage to each of you. But that's, you know, <laughs> successfully did four impact damage to Dromogamon just by messing around with it. It's not a bad play. You don't have your accuracy buff anymore. So Kabuterimon is looking slightly rough. Dromogamon is then going to use Generate Reaction again, so it's ready to intercept more attacks, and that's the end of its turn. No longer taunted. Merrimon is determined to beat the hell out of Togemon and keep this line going. Especially now that Ikakumon has moved in, Merrimon can hit these two with a line attack of opportunity. That's the dangerous thing about grouping up in this. There's these attacks of opportunity are coming out, lots of damage everywhere. So, Merrimon is going to use Heat Fist, which is line three, which will successfully get both of you. Uh, with that damage down, yeah, Kabuterimon isn't going to intercede this. Kabuterimon's going to gamble on that damage down from Mimi. It is three debuffs. All right, Merrimon also has Taunt. That's true. Okay, forget attacking Togemon. Merrimon's taunted. Let's target Kabuterimon and get this guy out of here. Merrimon is going to go for that. And Kabuterimon is going to attempt to take it. So, 
This check will be 3d6 plus 5 to hit Kabuterimon. Which doesn't! A miss! Shameful miss! Alright. You have... Not lost anything right now, but uh, Merrimon does not have a lot to do here. Merrimon is going to... Hold this position and again try and use Swelter and Shift, which will be 2d6 plus 5. Which also misses. A completely worthless turn for Merrimon. Terrible rolls. Ikakumon is up. Ikakumon is going to... Be in a weird position for hitting guys. What we're gonna do is take one shot at Centaurimon, which Dromogamon will use its inner seed for. So, because this is raised territory, Centaurimon is above everyone, and Dromogamon's thing is I will inner seed to protect people. So, Dromogamon uses one reaction to move. It uses bar digging, which burrow, which it has, to dig through the rock and surface to intercept an attack. And Ikakumon hits automatically with its first attack, which is going to be... This would have to be Harpoon Tornado. Yep. So that's an auto hit from Ikakumon. 2d6 plus 1 damage, dealt 2. Dromogamon. 7 points of damage, armor of 5, 2 points of damage. And Dromogamon is also at a higher position than Kabuterimon. Unfortunately, I can't validly draw a line of 5 to Dromogamon because the line of 4 intercepts with it first. I will claim this can go over Kabuterimon, but we're not going to get our advantage on this. Joe is going to use the uh, direct action. Also, Mimi... What did Mimi do? Mimi heckled Merrimon again because you have to stop this guy. No, wait, Togemon's action was ages ago. Oh, no, no, that is the time for it. Yeah, okay. Mimi has heckled... Merrimon, and she did use a direct at some point during these hits. It's a lot to keep track of these. Uh, Ikakumon is making an attack of accuracy. Joe is boosting it, so 2d6 as a light action, so spending an energy to do a light action with damage. 2d6 plus 7 to try and land Concussion Rain on Dromogamon. Yep. And that will also do 2d6 plus 1 damage. 10 damage, reduced by an armor of 5. 5 points of damage. We've nearly got this tank out of here, though the damage spread around the party is a little rough. Once Bergeron can have her turn, though, her positioning is fantastic. Well, we can at least get Centaurimon with a uh, Meteor Wing. Speaking of, it's Centaurimon's turn. Centaurimon's positioning is rough here. This terrain is obviously lower than this as well, so aiming for Bergeron is going to be difficult. Honestly, I'd allow it. Actually, if Ikakumon can target Dromogamon, I would let Centaurimon target back. Yeah, Centaurimon is going to do a, a line attack right here to try and hit Ikakumon. It goes through Kabuterimon, it does. Sorry, I can draw that line. If you can draw the line, it's real. So this is going to be a prominence beam with the intention of hitting Kabuterimon and Ikakumon both. Kabuterimon is going to make a very risky play by trying to man. 
It's going to get hit by this anyway, so Carbotarian 1 is going to make a very risky play. By using the Inner Seed reaction, we have to move adjacent to uh, Ikakumon. However, we've left adjacency with Dromogamon, which allows Dromogamon to make a free attack. This attack will be 3d6 plus 3. It does hit and deal 2d6 damage. 7, reduced by an armor of 3 to 4 points of health. So this also triggers Pale Black, which reflects damage, but it's impact damage, which can't reduce your health below one. Now, Centaurimon's attack will hit only Kabuterimon, but it is a guaranteed hit. The damage on Prominence Beam is 2d6 plus two. That is a knockout. I was really hoping to spend some of Kabuterimon's energy on recovering health. But unfortunately, Carbotarimon is down. The first two fall, and the tank is out. That's rough. It's Bergeron's turn. Bergeron, I wish your reach was just a little bit longer. This Meteor Wing with reach 3 is ruining us because we can't hit Tremogamon. But what we can do is use Red Sun with another energy to target all allies, granting buffs to everyone here. Not really necessary for Carboterimon, who I'll move off for now. This gives advantage to Meteor Wing, but if you use a movement action, you won't be able to Meteor Wing. So what we're going to do is we're going to target Centaurimon, and... Dromogamon is going to let that slide and focus on negating greater damage. So Bergeron will successfully hit. Sora will use direct on this just to boost it. This will be 4d6 plus 5, but also certain strike. 4d6 plus 7 to hit Centaurimon. That's a hit. It will do 2d6 damage. Yep, from Meteor Wing. Centaurimon takes 7 points of damage. It's Unimon's turn. Unimon will get back up. Know where its damage belongs. Well, do we need buffs? I think Unimon feels like it's better off doing damage. So Unimon is going to an attempt to attack Togemon using Holy Shot. This will be a 3d6 plus 3 to hit. Misses! And Unimon is now going to use its movement to leave this area and position to buff allies next turn. Actually, where did you start from? You have flight. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is a perfect position to get multiple folks. I can even move it a little bit better and here. Perfect positioning to buff your allies. That's Unimon's turn. Togemon. Togemon has used two different attacks. It used uh, an attack to hit Unimon recently, so the style gauge is at three, not two. Togemon is going to move one, two, three. Togemon is now going to use the same attack as last time, which will be Needle Spray because it is burst one and will hit both Dromogamon and Meramon. There is no means by which Dromogamon can move. Two, three. Yeah, no, Dromogamon cannot move in such a way that it can be... Wait, can you move this far? One, two, three. Oh, you can. All right, Dromogamon moves to absorb that Needle Rain because it does not want its ally to be hit. Uses up your reaction. You are 100% hit by this. And you get knocked out. Goodbye, 
Dramogamon. This has consumed Togemon's buffs. Togemon will use its reaction. I wish I'd moved Mimi up here too into the way, because then she would have blocked that off. That was a fault of order of operations on my end. But Togemon's reaction can now target Merimon. And this will be a second impact, which will be 2d6 plus 6, which is 3 for your accuracy and 3 for your style gauge. Your goal is to hit a 13. Yes, this is a hit on Merimon. This does a flat 2d6 damage. 11 damage. Togemon socks Merimon so hard. This was a move attack reaction. Togemon has nothing left to give, but gave a lot. Kabuterimon's turn is out. Koshiro does not have a lot to contribute here. Dramogamon, Merimon. Can Merimon move such that it could beam? Uh, Merimon doesn't have a ranged attack like that. Merimon's line is three. There's no good position to hit multiple folks at once. And if we leave, we can leave adjacency with Togemon freely. So what we're going to do is do that, forcing Togemon to move. One, two, three, into this back corner. This is still in range of Togemon's move, unfortunately. But this gives us an easy... Oh, you'll have to move here instead for an easy attack targeting Ikakumon. As a general rule, since Mimi is right here, targeting human characters is an option. For the most part, avoid it unless it's in character for the Digimon, because then it just becomes a mess of having to do inner seeds. But Merimon is doing an attacky, targeting its Kakumon directly. Bergemon is going to intercede this. Swoops in and takes this attack Fire Tower, which is 2d6 plus 4 damage from Merimon. But because of the debuffs, it's actually 2d6 minus 1, because Mimi really gave this thing a bad time. Bergemon swoops in, takes 5 damage that doesn't want Kabuterimon to take. Your debuffs are gone. And this was Merimon's turn. Ikakumon. Is going to take a shot at Merimon. No one can protect this. So this will be the closer range attack. Concussion rain. This will be 3d6 plus 5. Plus my buffs, 3d6 plus 8. Yep. It's just terrible roll. Still hits, still sends Merrimon to the grave. Goodbye, Merrimon. We will then spend energy to use our final attack. And this is where Joe will use uh, Direct again, that plus two bonus. Sentamon is six away, which is why we saved Harpoon Tornado. This will be 3d6, because Sniper and the Light Attack action cancel out. Plus five, plus two from Joe. 3d6 plus seven to hit Sentaramon. Yep. And another 2d6 plus one damage sent up north. 10 damage. I was honestly a little worried for this team, but they have managed to successfully pull it together. That is Ikakumon's turn. Out of, out of energy, spent really well. Sentaramon is going to work with Unimon to try and stop... You've used your reaction to try and stop what's going on here. So Sentaramon is going to... There is no good positioning for a line attack, which is Sentaramon's speciality. But that's why we have a light attack action. So 
Centaramon is going to target this general area with a attack called Backfoot Shooting, which is Blast 2, Push 2, with the intention of pushing Togemon right over Carbaterimon. I mean, this square is still occupied. You'd have to shoot here and push it here and then shoot a line through, which can be done if Backfoot Shooting hits. This is the light attack action, so it is 2d6 plus 5. We do not have Unimon's buffs. Anything could happen. You could even miss. And with back foot shooting, failing to position this lion attack, we're just going to take a prominence beam targeting Togemon. 3d6 plus 5. Two hit and deal 2d6 plus 2 damage. Seven damage to Togemon. And that's Centaramon's turn. Bergemon is up. Bergemon regains her reaction. Is once again going to use... Actually, Bergemon does not need to use her energy here. Bergemon uses Red Sun and just targets these two naturally. And as part of that, can finally use the shift property of Red Sun to move Togemon into melee with Unimon. Hello there. Unfortunately, all my good targets are out of the way, which is why Bergeron is going to move one, two, three, four into melee with everyone to contribute. Unimon is up. Unimon hates this. Unimon cannot use Angel Feathers as a free action, so can't safely disengage from this. Could try and leave adjacency that's not going to work well either uh unimon is going to target togemon with an attack called the one horn which is 3d6 plus 5 but bergemon's just going to intercede this because togemon's turn is coming up so this is just going to hit 2d6 damage to bergemon seven damage to the bird who loses her reaction again Unimon has used the one horn. What else are you going to do, Unimon? You don't have a lot of options here. How are you going to get out of this? Uh, Unimon buffs Centaramon with angel feathers. Unimon has seen the writing on the walls, and the writing of the walls is that Togemon is about to do a punch. You still have buffs. So you've got your reaction back. Aiming to Centaramon is difficult, but that's okay. What Togemon is going to use is her final move, Coconut Upper, targeting Unimon. That's 3d6 plus 3 naturally, plus 3 more because of buffs, plus 3 more because of style gauge, 3d6 plus 9, a very nice roll for a 19. Because that was another unique attack, your style gauge goes up again. You've spent your buffs. You're also going to commit with spending your last energy, recovering 2 HP, and rolling 3d6 plus 2 twice. It is literally impossible not to roll a 5 with a 3d6 plus 2. Unimon leaves the scene. Togemon still has one action left and uses her move to scramble up to Centurimon. Hello! Maybe you have some concerns about what's about to happen to you. You should! It's Ikakumon's turn. You're six away, so Ikakumon is going to happily do a sniper attack with plus three from buffs and plus three, plus five from accuracy. 4d6 plus 8, targeting Centurimon. And 2d6 plus 1 damage for the knockout blow. Boom! Everyone has been defeated. The humans played a back roll for most of this, doing direct actions for the most part. I tried to get the scan action a little more involved. Merrimon refused to be positioned right. Dromogon was the first to get knocked out. Unimon did have its trait deactivated. Centaramon just loses the doubled reach at half health, which 
may have actually made it difficult to hit Ikakumon, now that I think about it. But since Turumon was targeting Togemon, who was down here, I think that was still valid at the time, but I did forget that. There's a lot to handle when you're running both sides of combat. If this were just me in charge of the NPCs while my players were going at it, it would be a lot better. And maybe I will call on one of my players to help out with the next test. You've grasped the basics of combat. I will be sharing the build guide for NPCs in the near future. I don't think with this recording just yet because I still need to test the other templates. The next template to be tested out is the elite template. Two elite NPCs should be able to handle an entire player group or prove equal to them. So with a group of four here, each elite NPC should be equal to two players. But if you were to be with five or six players, they'd be equal to more. The rules for how that building works are detailed. I have written them out. They are almost ready to roll out. I need to put some more effort into writing out the section on traits because traits are the most complex, but also I feel most interesting part of the system. But the elite test will be soon and these four will be facing off against Ogamon and a brainwashed Leomon because of course they will. Okay, that's the basics for this, but uh, yeah. What else do I want to say before I go on? Not much. I'm happy with this. You have access to the combat guide. You've seen the basics of how combat plays. It came down pretty close. Not to the wire, but there was definitely some back and forth, and that's exactly the needle I was trying to thread with the balancing for this. So I'm pleased. I am pleased. Thanks for watching.